Welcome. This is a session for DTLN on Google Sheets for data analysis. This is level two. Last week, I did a session on level one where we covered adding, um, adding data to your spreadsheet, how to do simple formulas, how to do some formatting, uh, and we covered some other things as well. In this one for level two, we are going to be covering how to assign a filter and we are also going to do conditional formatting. The focus of this session is on using data so that it is actionable in the classroom so that teachers can very quickly sort information um, and see who needs help, who what the needs are, both visually through color as well as through using filters to just pull the kids that you need. All right. So um, this is coming to you through the Dell Texas Learning Network. Today is November 30th. This is me. My name is Eileen Fernandez Parker. I am your facilitator. I'm going to turn off the um, video camera now. I'm here because I believe that everyone can learn and grow, and that's students and educators. If you need to get in contact with me, my name is here again, Eileen Fernandez Parker. My work email is Eileen at cultivatingthelearning.com. My mobile number is here, and if you are on um, Twitter, you can contact me or tag me at, at EFP Tech. And also, if you could use the hashtag ALP Learn, uh, that would be wonderful. So just a little bit uh, about how this training came about. Uh, this professional learning session is available through your district's purchase of technology. Texas was super smart and they pooled their money and uh, you it's coming to you through Operation Connectivity. Uh, about advanced learning partnerships, we work with our um, clients as partners. Uh, we want them to trust us and we trust them. We cherish and value all the people that we work with. We, we look for opportunities and uh, how we can serve um, and we serve with gratitude. So here's our agenda for today. We are just covering two things, but they are pretty complex. So we're gonna be covering how to apply and use filters to identify needs and create small groups. We're also gonna be covering how to apply conditional formatting so that visually you can see student needs and create small groups, okay? All right, um, you will need data to work with. So if you already have your own data set, feel free to use that. If you do not, please add a tab and type in bit.ly slash and the uppercase matters, DTLN workbook. Okay, when you go to that, you are going to see this. You are going to see this spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet has multiple tabs at the bottom. What I'm working with right now is a is the same workbook, but I've already gone through the steps for the level one training. So if you want your um, workbook to look like mine, then you need to go back and watch that first video and work your way through it. So what is on here that is so important is knowing how to freeze your columns and rows, because on a large data set, when you scroll up, that first row will disappear. And when you scroll left and right, the left disappears also. So you won't know which student is which, okay? So this one is already frozen. What we're gonna do now, and I'm on the tab that says freezing columns and rows. What I'm gonna do is I am going to show you how to apply a filter, okay? Now I am going to take, I'm gonna unfreeze those columns and rows right now first. because I want to show you when you apply a filter, it's very important that you don't have any blank rows in your spreadsheet, because if you do, then the filter will only apply as far down as the data is. Once there's a break, the filter does not continue, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I inserted 
the um, this this uh, empty row, I'm going to delete that empty row now. So check your data first. Make sure you have no empty rows. Okay. Now what we're going to do is on your toolbar on the right hand side, you should see this. It looks like a funnel. And when you hover over it, it says create a filter. Okay. If you cannot see that, it might be because your screen is not wide enough. So if you look now, you'll see that there are three dots here. That means that your toolbar has been truncated. And when you click on that, just like an ellipsis, it means more. You get the rest of the toolbar that pops down. So if you have to click on that so that you can see the filter button, go ahead and click on it. Okay. And then what I want you to do is I'm going to widen my screen again. I want you just to click you first. We have to, sorry, select row one. That is super important. Select row one where your headers are and then click on the filter. Okay. Now what happens when you do that is now I have these, um, I'm going to try and zoom in or make my screen bigger for you. You end up with these little funnels inside that top row. Okay. Now I'm going to shrink back out again and I want to show you something important. Sometimes spreadsheets, I'm going to insert four rows at the top. Sometimes spreadsheets have other data up here like information, just telling you where it came from, and you don't want it to be included in your filter. So I'm going to turn that filter off and you don't always have to pick row one. If some of these rows you don't want to be in the filter, you have to choose the row that actually has the headers in it. Okay. So I'm going to reselect it and I'm going to tap on that funnel and that automatically adds the filters. Now notice there's a green line here at the top and there's going to be a green line down here. Notice it stops when we get to an empty row, just like I told you it would. Okay. If you get additional data that comes in, all you have to do is turn off the filter, reselect the row and turn the filter back on. And then it will um, include any new data that has come in since you last applied it. All right. Now I'm going to delete these rows because I don't need them anymore, but I just wanted you to know, you don't always have to choose the first row. You want to choose the row that has the headers in it. Okay. So I'm going to delete those rows. Okay. Now, like I told you, when, when we scroll up, we can't see the headers anymore and that's a problem. All right. And when we scroll left and right, we can't see them. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to, um, go to view freeze. And we want that first row to be frozen. Now, when I scroll, my headers are frozen. That is so key for data analysis. Now for the, um, for the columns, I need to see their first and their second name or their first and last name is what I should say. And so I'm going to select row B and I'm going to go to view freeze. Now one and two columns are options, but I can also, if I just select column B and I choose view freeze, it says up to column B. So if I wanted to go all the way to column D, I do not highlight like this. Instead, I select the last column that I want to freeze. And then I go to view freeze and it'll let me do up to column D. Okay. But for right now, I just want it up to B. So now I can move back and forth. I've got my filter on here. So now what I want you to see is let's just say these are map scores, right? <clears throat> From different years. So let's say this is, uh, um, I'm just going to pretend it's 2019 still. And I need to find out who my highs, my mediums and my lows would be. So when I click on this funnel, I get this pop-up menu. Now, all 
every single value that is in the um, column will show up here. Notice this drag, um, um, whatever this is called. <laughs> um, I can move scroll, I can use the scroll bar to move up and down. If I have a lot of unique numbers here, I would have to individually select the ones that I want. That's not probably helpful. I can clear all of them. And if I just want to know the A's, I can select just the ones that are starting with 90. But it, if I need to go larger, I can select individual ones. And then watch what happens to this grouping. When I hit OK, notice the scores here are only 90s and 80s. OK? So if I wanted to make all of these kids a group, then I could highlight these, copy them, and then I could paste them somewhere else. So if I'm working and I want to create something in, let's say, slides, and this is where I'm organizing all of my information for the kids to see maybe stations, then I can add a layout that has columns and this could be group one and then i can paste those names they're a little bit small because i'm going to turn off the shrink text on overflow i don't want that so i want them to be able to see their names okay now in a perfect world i wouldn't have this many they wouldn't go off the list but i can just double click and then highlight the rest of them and add them in this other column. Okay, so that's how you can very quickly create your, um, your groups from your spreadsheet, okay? So again, all I did was I created my filter. When I click on the funnel, I cleared them all and then I selected the ones that I wanted. I can also select all and then deselect the ones that I don't want, depending on which is more work, right? And then when I hit the OK, I have all 70s and 80s. So in a perfect world, this, well, not a perfect world, but in a current world, these might be standards that are up here, right? So this might be standard 6.1. This might be standard 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, and so on. And I would pull my small group based on the standard. So if I just want the kids who are who have A's, then I can deselect my B's, hit OK. And these are all the kids who have A's. So I'm going to give them work that is different from the kids who have B's and C's, OK? All right, now there's more that you can do. I'm going to select all and hit OK so that everybody comes back into the group. And now I want to show you other things that you can do here. We can sort alphabetically or reverse, right? So this is the same as 0 to 10 or 10 to 0. So if I want to sort them, I can also just look at these kids and when i scroll over i can see exactly who it is here and then i can copy that and paste it i can also highlight these and color code them myself if i want to and i've got my a's my b's and my c's and these might also be ones through four that have to do with uh, that have to do with uh, mastery, right? So these could all be fours versus threes or twos or ones. And I can physically color code them. I'm going to show you a shortcut though for color coding because that can be a lot. And you can actually just do one really quick conditional formatting that will automatically 
uh, that will automatically do it for you. Okay. Now I have to find the exact orange that I used. All right. So we can click on the funnel and sort them and it will only sort for this column. It's not going to sort for all of the columns. So the people move, but, um, and so if I sort on this column, they're going to move based on this column, right? So now I've got my, my low kids here. I can copy them and paste them, etc. Okay. And I can physically color code them, but again, that's a lot of work and you don't need to do that. Okay. All right. So sorting is very important. If I want the high kids to be at the top, I'm going to sort in reverse so that my hundreds and 199s are at the top. Okay. So I can sort, if I want to sort for this, if we call this a standard, right? I can do them here and I know who my highs, my middles and my lows are. So I'm not going to group a 66.7 with a 100 if I'm working on a standard because these kids have already mastered it and these kids have not. I might do my 60s and my 70s together. That might work. I might start with my 60s and then add my 70s so that, you know, they come in when they're ready. But this is a super quick way for you to be able to sort and create your groups. Okay. Now I'm going to remove this formatting because I want to show you conditional formatting. Okay. So I'm going to go to fill color reset. And I want to show you another trick. Notice it removed all the color. Sometimes it's hard to figure out which color you already used, but I know that this cell is formatted properly and I want this to be the same as this. Once I select this cell, I can go up here to this paint roll and it's called paint format. When I click on that, it picks up the format from this row, not the number, not the information, but just the format. And now what I want to do is I'm going to click and drag on these cells and they automatically pick up the same formatting. Okay. Now notice it changed my, my, um, decimals. So I am going to have to go up here and I have decrease decimal places and increase. I just want to decrease them so that they all match. I don't need decimals. Okay. All right, now I want to show you some, uh, I'm going to change these. I want to show you another trick. I'm going to say that this is standard 6.1 and I'm going to show you a trick. Notice I did not have to type in 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, right? I'm going to undo that and I'm going to show you how I did that. The computer already has been programmed to understand numbers in a row and months in order, not alphabetically, but January, February, March. Okay. So once I label this first item and I know that it, I want it to be 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, I'm going to zoom in here. When I, click on this cell, notice this blue dot or sorry, square in the bottom right hand corner. Okay. Notice that blue square because that is key. You're going to put your cursor over that and it will turn into a plus sign. You can't see it probably in this video, um, because it, it's not set up to pick that up. But when I click on it and I drag across, it is automatically going to continue the pattern. Okay. So if six only goes up to six and then it goes 7.1, I can change this to be 7.1. And then I'm going to copy this one over and it just automatically will cover whatever the next thing is. So you have to find that square. Your cursor has to change to a plus sign and then you know you're ready to drag. Okay. Now let me show you, uh, I just want to show you the months. So if you have January here 
If I click on it and I wait for my plus sign cursor and I click and drag, bam, look at that. You've got the months right across the top. Okay. I'm just going to delete that for now. Okay. Now some of my, because I've been playing with this a lot, some of my, um, <coughs> students are repeated in here. I want to show you how you can get rid of extra, um, or duplicates, right? Because sometimes you will get duplicates in a data set if it is sent to you from somebody else. Um, so I can hold down, if you're on a PC, you're going to hold down the control key. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hold down the command key and I can jump over other rows so that I can select specific rows that repeat. Okay. So as I select these, now I lift up the um, keyboard keys and I can right click and choose delete selected rows. Okay. Now you might not be able to see the pop-up menu in this video, but when I hit delete selected rows, now they're gone. Okay. So this is a better data set now. So now what I want to show you is how to do conditional formatting that will color code the cells based on how well students have done. So if we want to say that um, 80 and above is one category, and then first you have to decide what your separating uh, lines are. So I'm going to say every 20 will be a different color. Okay. So what I have to do is so that you can see all of this, I'm going to shrink it down and I'm going to select cell C2, which is the first grade that's entered. And I'm going to go all the way down. I'm going to go even beyond it. I'm going to do the whole spreadsheet up to wherever there's a final standard. Once I select that, I'm going to let go. I'm going to go up to the format menu. I'm going to go down to conditional formatting. When I click on that, I get a pop-up window over here on the right. Okay. Let me see if I can make the pop-up window bigger. Good. Now everything is selected. And what I have to do, here's the range and that is C2. Notice it was C2 here all the way to O20. So the computer knows, it, it can pick up the identity of the cells. So you don't have to worry about that as long as you can click and drag. Here you've got options. Notice the drop down arrow. And it says, I don't want it to be empty or not empty. I want it to be any, um, that it, this is going to be a range. So what we have to do is go farther down and we're going to choose that it's going to be greater than or equal to 80. So I've got greater than or equal to, and I'm going to put in an 80 and we're going to say that this is going to be green because those kids are good. Just like a stoplight green is great. Okay, go. And then I'm not going to hit done. That's the trick. You have to scroll down and you have to hit add another rule. If I hit done, then I have to start at the beginning and reselect everything. But if I hit add another rule, then it's going to be a second rule that will be applied to the same exact group of cells. So when I hit add another rule, it comes up the same. I still want it to be greater than or equal to, but this time I'm going to choose 60 and I'm going to change it from green to let's say yellow. And then I'm going to hit add another rule. And this one is going to be less than or equal to 59. 
and I'm going to make that one red. Now I'm going to hit done and let's see if it worked. They show up over here so I can change them if I need to. Okay. And we're going to come over here. Now what I need to do is I need to get rid of the yellow that was here because it's showing up the same. Okay. So let me just see if I come in here and I choose reset. Now the non conditional formatted cells are white and I've got green and I've got yellow. So what that tells me is I don't have anybody here that is below 60, right? Let me close this out. Let me change some of these grades and see what happens. If I change this 99 to a 55, see how it turns red? So if you use conditional formatting and a student comes up red, you've got a red flag. What's beautiful about this is notice these ones were conditionally formatted before any numbers went in. So you can format the entire spreadsheet up front so that no matter what, Whenever a kid is below a 60, it's red. And you've got your greens, your yellows, and your reds. So very quickly you can say, you can see, oh, well, Tweety Bird and Aladdin and Fred Flintstone, they are gonna be a group, right? And these others are gonna be a group. When you conditionally format ahead of time, I'm just gonna type some numbers in here you can see how they come up. You see, so it will automatically do it for you. You can set the um, criteria to be whatever you want. So if you are using a one through four uh, rubric, you can go into I'm going to do the format, conditional formatting. <clears throat> you can change these to be whatever you want. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to change these and not go to O20, but I'm going to go to K20 and I'm going to use L through O to be a rubric um, conditional formatting. Okay. So if you're doing mastery learning, it's going to be very important. So I'm going to change this. What did I say? to K. All right, so that one is fixed. And I still need to keep it open though. This one is also going to be K. And this one is also going to be K and done. All right. So now that I'm in L, when I click on these cells, notice nothing is showing up over here. But when I click on these cells, I can see what the conditional formatting was set for. All right. So these ones I'm going to set for to be conditional formatting on a rubric scale of one to four. Went too far. Okay. So I'm going to add a rule. And I'm going to say that it's going to be exactly, so these are greater than, equal to, in between. I'm going to choose the text that is, whoops, is exactly a four. And instead of being green, I'm going to make that one blue because that's even better. And then I'm going to hit add another rule. It's still the same set of um, cells, but this time it's going to be a three is a green, whoops, is a green, add another rule, a two is going to be my orange, add another rule, 
and a one is going to be a red. Now, if you deal with one and a halves, one and three quarters, then you would have to do the in-betweens because it is going to, it won't be just one, so it won't be exact, okay? So now let's just say I, I'm, I gave the kids an assessment just on standard 7.4. Let's see if the conditional formatting works. Right? And I know this one didn't colorize because it doesn't match any of them because I accidentally hit the wrong keys. Okay, so once you have this formatted, if you have information coming from a Google form and dumping into here, then you can create the spreadsheet that it goes to, and then you can set it up. If you have, if you're receiving information, or if you can get a CSV file from like IXL or Achieve 3000, or, you know, whatever digital platform you are using, you can import that into Google Sheets, and then you can do your conditional formatting. Okay, now since I mentioned that, I'm going to add it to this training because it didn't occur to me until just now that you do need to know how to open up a CSV file. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add um, a new blank file, new spreadsheet. Now, you've got multiple things that you can do. All right. So, if I have file, I can import the file because maybe it's on my desktop. So I can upload a CSV file and you can either drag it or select it and find it. Okay. If it's already in your drive, then you can just go to your drive. And if I type in .csv, it will search and give me all of the CSV files that I have. Now, what's interesting is the CSV files come in as text files because they are actually text and they're separated by commas. That's what CSV stands for, comma separated value. So if I double click on that, I can choose to replace this spreadsheet. So I need to choose my location. If I wanna put it in an existing spreadsheet as a new tab, I can, I can choose to do that. Okay. So I can replace a spreadsheet, replace a current sheet, append stuff. There are all kinds of things you could do. We want it to separate by comma because it's a CSV file. And we want, do we want to convert text to numbers, dates, and formulas? You would have to decide if it doesn't work out, just do it again. So I'm going to hit import data. And here I have all the information that I need. Okay. So everything is here. So if you get a CSV file, all you have to do is open up a blank spreadsheet, choose import and select the file. It will work whether it came to you from Microsoft Word or whether it came from Google or whatever, because a CSV file is neither Microsoft nor Google. It's just a type of file. Okay. All right, so um, that is it for this more advanced session. So again, if you <clears throat> would like to learn some of the other things that I covered, um, so the tabs here are what I did. We did simple formulas with percents. We did simple formulas with adding for summing. Uh, we did freezing columns and rows, and we talked about how to import um, new data, insert new data, sorry. And um, we did some formatting um, stuff in the video, the first video, and then this is the more advanced video. So if you found this useful, please, if you would, type in tinyurl.com slash DTLN course. It is case sensitive, so make sure you uppercase the DTLNC. And if you would give us some feedback, we would really appreciate it. Okay, and thank you very much for hanging in there with us.